Hey guys, what's going on? It's me again. Um, haven't had any content for a while, but I've got some ideas of what I'm going to be doing. And uh, hopefully, um, especially this weekend, I'll probably have some stuff up. And um, things are just really hectic right now. I, I genuinely don't even have time to write anymore, and that really pains me. And I mean, my videos even, those are easier to do than my writing. And I don't even have time for them. So <clears throat> you can imagine the kind of stuff that I've been having to deal with. Uh, but anyways, I uh, wanted to bring up some stuff. Um, uh, Spider-Man related, big surprise. Uh, okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. See, there was quite a bit of speculation for quite a while in regards to whether or not the Green Goblin was going to appear in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, in what capacity, who would play him, so on and so forth, etc., etc. And there is a trailer that's due out in a few days on Friday, and uh, that's a pretty big deal. Um... And I can't really say how or where, but I can tell you that I did see it. Uh, unfortunately, I only got to see it dubbed in Russian, which is actually quite amusing. Because, uh, I gotta tell you, them dub voices um, really do not fit the actors. But, but that's beside the point. Um, I will say, though, that uh, visually... It definitely looks good. I'm not going to talk any more about it, though, because um, I want people to experience it fresh. I kind of wish I had been able to, but I I couldn't resist seeing at least visually what was going to happen. Um, the visuals are... You, we're definitely in for a treat, I can promise you that. But it's... Uh, the thing that I really want to talk about right now is um, some of the complaints that have been coming out. Uh, based on this, and I want to start with the uh, the preview trailers. Um, as you all know, it has become common practice in uh, films these days for film studios to release trailers, you know, countdown trailers, hype trailers, what have you, little tiny, tiny little spots, you know, to tell people, you know, to announce and uh, preview and tease people for the premiere of the trailer online. Now, this has especially become a thing because these companies really want the ad revenue. And they found out that, you know, a lot of times when they post the trailer, they get maybe, you know, a thousand hits or whatever. And then this would happen and that would happen. And, you know, all these other channels would download it and upload it and wind up getting more than the official. So one reason that they try to build up hype for the trailer and tell you where you're going to go watch it, which is theirs, is because, you know, they get more direct revenue for that. But it's also because, you know, the more hype they can build up for the movie before it comes out, the better. And the more they can get people interested in watching the trailer, the more likely they are to see the movie. Even if they think it'll look bad, they're still more likely to see the movie. That is a very odd statistic, but it does exist. <clears throat> Now, what upsets me about it is the fact that there are people knocking the thing because quite literally based solely on the merit that it's CGI. The, the, the first part of the preview consists of Peter, uh, Spider-Man, falling from the great height, um... Honestly, to me, it looks rather impressive. I mean, as he's falling, you can see the uh, wind rustling his costume and everything. It, it looks great. And then, at the last minute, as he um, gets down below the building line, he shoots out a web, you know, swings upward. And that's where it cuts off. But, but... You know, to me, that was perfectly all right. Uh, I thought it was good. It's just there to build up hype for the trailer, so I'm not expecting the most out of it. I'm not even expecting the most, you know, uh, budgetary work put into it. You know, they, they, they're just, you know, throwing this in there, uh, throwing this out there on the cheap. It, it's, you know, there's no secret of that. But what I really do not understand
uh, is that how do I put this? People saying that it it's bad CGI uh, simply because of some of the most nitpicky details. Now I'm not going to say it's the best CGI ever, and I don't expect it to be the final version either. But uh, saying things like it's bad CGI just because you can't see reflections in his eyepieces as he swings by. He swings by in like the blink of an eye. Unless you do a frame by frame, you're not even going to be able to see his eyes. I mean, your eyeballs would not process that. Barely, if even. It's just... Oh. I mean, there's that. There's that. But then... Oh, then. Then, we have the people saying... That um, it's bad CGI because uh, you can tell it's CGI. I would definitely challenge anyone, anyone who uh, has seen CGI in motion to provide any sort of instance where there's CGI with a lot of movement to it that does not look like CGI. You know, fast, rapid motion. Please, point that out to me. The best you can do with some CGI that looks authentic with stuff that's holding still or with a few objects that are small moving in the background. But when it's the object that's front and center in the camera moving rapidly, you're going to have some tell that that's CGI. Even Avatar had that, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the CGI alone. Okay? Uh, the the only the times where it looked the most quote-unquote real were scenery shots and when they weren't moving around all that much. And that's the case with CGI, period. Um, but moving beyond that, uh, what I really want to talk about are some of the things that were revealed in terms of a uh, official banner that hit a little bit earlier than I think they would have liked because they initially weren't posting it. They weren't denying that it was official, but they weren't you know, posting it. And then finally they posted a picture of it, uh, a photo of the banner. They still haven't put up the actual banner. Uh, I don't expect that they will, likely until after this uh, teaser hits. In fact, I'm not sure if they'll even put up the banner at all. Um, but, you know, uh, anyways. Eh, how, do I, how do I say this? Um... But yeah, at any rate, uh, the they're, they're, uh, visible on the front are um, Electro and the Rhino and apparently the Green Goblin. Now, I want to talk about this because this is getting some very bizarre controversy. Uh, first and foremost, Electro. To this day, even though his look is quite literally, quite literally ripped right out of Ultimate Spider-Man, right out of the comics... His backstory, too, is ripped right out of the 616. I, I, I can talk at length about that if I have to. But, you know, his look, at least, has basis in the Ultimate Comics. And this is not an uncommon trend. Um, Thor, for example, while being clearly more based on 616 Thor, um, has the look of Ultimate Thor. Which, you know, the lack of the winged helmet, the beard, that, that that's Ultimate. Um, that's not to say Thor never had a beard in 616, but he's a lot more commonly known as Clean Shaven, whereas Ultimate Thor is more known for the goatee thing. But, I digress. Um, the point is, you know, this is not an uncommon trend in Marvel films. Uh, the MCU does it frequently. In fact, the MCU, if anything, will, uh, actually deviate from the comics a bit more than what I've seen here, but th th that's another story for another day. The point is, um, it is Electro, okay? And it is a recognizable form of Electro, if you are at all familiar with the comics. And I mean, you know, at all familiar. I mean, for crying out loud, even if you played frickin' um, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which sadly more people have than have read the comics, it seems. But um, even if you have, you've seen that version of Electro. So you know that's an Electro that is existing, established in Spider-Man, and yet they're going to say that it's a complete disregard for the source material. And that's... Why? How? I don't understand that. I really don't. 
even the suit that he wears later is pretty much a variant on the on what you see Electro first wear when he shows up, except instead of a lightning bolt down the front, uh, it's got that collar and it's got two lightning bolts on the side. That's the only tweak. It's still a black rubber suit. So I don't get how this is somehow so different from the source material. I don't. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Rhino, and here it's a slightly more legitimate complaint, and yet not quite. Um, the Rhino, as you can see, definitely is uh, on all fours here, and definitely resembles a literal robotic rhinoceros. Now, this has a lot of people upset, because for some reason they are now convinced that uh, Paul Giamatti, uh, Alexei Sitstevich, is not going to be in that suit, but piloting it remotely. Um, I really, really don't see that, especially considering the fact that um, he is specifically seen on set in a motion capture suit, sitting up there on his shoulders. I really think that what's happening here is that he is inside that thing, and I think that thing has multiple forms. It's got a charge form, which is going to be used for, you know, ramming speed, and then he's going to have a bipedal form, which is going to be more, you know, dexterous. Um, so, yes, I do think that it's going to be a mechanical suit with multiple forms. Um, and if I recall, in one of the uh, Spider-Man games, when Rhino was going to charge, he did actually get down on all fours. Now, this, again, is somewhat of a legitimate complaint, and yet not. Because while Rhino hasn't really had a transforming mechanical suit in any sense... He has had a robotic suit. Uh, Ultimate Rhino had, took a set of mechanized armor, a suit of armor, mechanized armor, mind you, cybernetic, and uh, put it on, stole it, put it on, and that's how he gained his ability. Uh, different from 616, but yes, there is, uh, there is some familiarity in how he looks, and I can understand that, but at the same time... You know, this does have a basis, so it's not like it's entirely without basis, and they were trying to go for something new. And again, um, there is confirmation that not all these villains are going to be dying. In fact, maybe none of them are. Uh, Giamatti already did confirm, though this is a slight spoiler, so uh, skip ahead about uh, 10 seconds from when I uh, finish this, if you don't want to be spoiled. And skip. Paul Giamatti did specifically say that the Rhino was going to be back for The Amazing Spider-Man 3. So, you know, there is that. And so, as a result of that, it is entirely possible that, you know, just like these characters, uh, just like Spider-Man has uh, changed his look over time, so have some of the villains updated their look, in, even in the comics. So, who's to say that that won't change here? Especially since this is a robotic suit, he can tweak it, he can add stuff to it, he can change it. Um, he can decide that maybe the one form isn't needed. He can decide that maybe this is needed. He can decide maybe, you know, there is there are possibilities for that. And especially with someone who's as thick-headed as uh, Alexei, who uh, doesn't really think things through too well sometimes, there, there's some potential for hilarity as a recurring character there. Kind of like how um, Shocker was kind of reduced to a uh, gag recurring character in Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, uh, unjustly in my opinion, but okay. <clears throat> but, uh, you could do the same with Rhino in this film series. And, uh, I have to admit it would be quite funny. <laughs> Even if, especially if, like, when they start doing the spin-off movies that they announced, if, uh, any of the other heroes that may or may not exist in this universe to wind up having to face him and also, you know, he, he'd just be, you know, the, the bad luck Brian of the... The supervillain world that 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 has potential, but I can kind of understand that. But the one that I really really have issue with right now <clears throat> is we did see the Green Goblin on this poster. Now there are a lot of people saying, well, maybe it's not the Green Goblin, maybe it's the Hobgoblin. It doesn't resemble the Hobgoblin at all. Uh, he is green. He is wearing a suit, and his face is green. So I'm pretty darn sure that's the Green Goblin, fellas. Now, the reason that this upsets me is when you look at it, 
And uh, this is honestly one of the best uh, resolution close-ups we got of this picture right now. You can see that he does have on some green armor. That's not a big deal because it's not like plastic looking armor. Uh, definitely looks a bit more practical. It honestly does remind me of um, what um, Norman wore in the Marvel Knights arc when he created the Sinister 12. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But, but uh, it really does, you know, it looks... To me, good. I mean, he's got the he's got the suit. Uh, he's got the white hair, the the which I thought was actually a really nice touch. Uh, it was actually one of the things some people may recall that I was hoping for. Um, and he does have a green face. He's got the pointy ears. He's got the well, you know, the green face, the pointy ears. He's got the white hair. Uh, his mouth, the way his mouth is situated, does look like he's got fangs. Um, that is conjecture at this point until we get a, uh, well, technically conjecture until we get a high resolution photo. It's just the way his jaws set and the way he's got his lips positioned. It looks like he's showing fangs. So it looks like, yes, he does indeed look like a green goblin. And, you know, he's on a glider that actually looks like a glider and not a snowboard. So I really don't understand why people don't like this. But then it keeps drawing comparisons to how Harry looked in Spider-Man 3 with just the goggles and the armor and the snowboard. Yeah, they're actually saying this looks like a surfboard. I have no idea how. It's pretty clearly got a shape to it that is not a surfboard or a snowboard. And you can see the engine in the back for crying out loud. And I don't understand the comparison there. I especially can't understand how suddenly this is being compared to Willem Dafoe's suit. And people are actually saying they prefer Dafoe's. People have actually been saying to me that they prefer Dafoe's to the comics. Especially when I point out that this actually looks closer to how the Green Goblin looks in the comics. Because, according to them, the comic version of the Green Goblin is, in fact, just a relic of the past. Something that is a remnant of a time when cheesy B-movie monsters were considered scary. Which, apparently, is why they like the version in the clearly fake plastic armor and the giant goofy mask that doesn't move. Because they don't like cheesy B-movie monsters. But I digress. Um, so according to them, it's good that Willem Dafoe's looked nothing like that. In fact, Willem Dafoe's suit is the direction they should have taken with this. That is how you do the Green Goblin, you see. And also it helps that Willem Dafoe just acted just like him. Because as we all know, Norman was just bad because he wanted to be with no real goal other than to be bad and to do bad things and had absolutely no complex backstory or motivation beyond. I had an accident and now I'm crazy with a split person that wait no you know what that's absolutely not at all norman osborne norman osborne is a sick twisted sadistic sob norman osborne has done things that when you actually read his exploits would make your skin crawl norman osborne is a villain whose sadism is on par with the joker possibly even greater Joker does what he does for a reason, yes, and it's a reason known only to himself. Norman, however, will quite literally do things just because. There's absolutely no reason for it. He will, in fact, sometimes target somebody just because they annoy him. He And I'm not talking about as the Green Goblin. I'm talking about in his capacity as Norman Osborn. He will completely ruin someone's life just because he's in a bad mood. We're talking about a guy who it's actually stated in the comics Drowns Kittens. For fun. Okay? Even before exposure to that goblin serum, which only enhanced his wickedness, the guy was willingly and knowingly uh, having people put in prison for long periods of time for crimes they did not commit. He was having people killed. He was stealing people's ideas and then having them jailed as dangerous psychopaths when his tinkering with their idea would go awry. He was a sociopath. He had violent tendencies and very dark tendencies ever since he was a child. The only thing that ever calmed that in him was his wife, Emily. And when she died, 
it came back with a vengeance. The only thing that even was a tiny little anchor for him was his son. Because his son was something that he and his wife had produced. If only for that, if only because he reminded him of her, Harry was a bit of an anchor for his father. But once that serum hit him, even that didn't really have much of a hold on him anymore. And eventually it did choke it out altogether. Norman Osborn is a very complex and very, very dark and twisted individual. I mean, for crying out loud, we are talking about the man whose first action upon announcing himself as back from the dead, or at the very least, you know, still being alive, was to poison Peter and Mary Jane's baby. He didn't kill her. He knew that wouldn't kill her. He didn't kill Peter. He killed their baby. Their unborn daughter specifically poisoned her so that she would be stillborn. Then on top of that, stole the body away. They didn't even have a body to bury. That is how sick Norman Osborn is. Not some generic cackling, you're with me or you're against me, Spider-Man. No. That is not Norman Osborn. That is a freaking Saturday morning cartoon villain. And to sit there and say that that is somehow a thousand times better than what is depicted in those comics, and to say that is somehow a thousand times better than anything could ever possibly come close to, is disgusting to me, okay? As a fan, that is one of the most disgusting things you could ever say about Norman Osborn. I... Seriously, he, oh my god, the, 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 this is a character who is so wicked. I mean, he, a, a security guard, okay, at the prison he was staying in. A friggin' security guard. Uh, wh where was he staying at that point? Was it the raft? I, I don't even remember. But, he, a security guard, who was nice to him, who befriended him. Okay? Had his wife sick. Norman, being a... You know, having multiple degrees, being a chemist, said, maybe I can help you figure out something to treat your wife. And he gave him a compound. And you know what? It was a toxin that slowly killed her. Slowly and painfully killed her. Why? Just because Norman felt like it. Just because he felt like it. Alright? So don't even go talking to me about how freaking Willem Dafoe nailed Norman Osborn. Okay? Do not. <sighs> now moving on. I really do not understand how this is bad. All right, I I really can't say it beyond that. It's not perfect, and I know that people are putting out that little Photoshop thing where they recolored it with purple and put the hat on there and said, "Is this really so much to ask for?" Uh, apparently so, because then you have the other half bitching that it's way too much like the comics, which are bad. So yeah, you know what? This is actually a compromise. It's right down the middle, and it's really one of the best things I've seen in terms of the Green Goblin on film. It really is. Because nobody can complain about the mask, because it's not a mask, it's his actual face. And yes, you know what? I really do think that they're going to have a transformation. I think that they're combining 616 and Ultimate, and I think that the, that the face is going to be reversible. That yes, he's going to be able to take on the goblin form, but I think that he's also going to be able to go back to being himself. If you need a good parallel as to what that would kind of be like, look at the show. Grimm, for example, the Vessin in there. They, whenever they, uh, you know, feel like showing themselves, they can, and they take on a more bestial form. Now, and it's still mostly humanoid at the same time. Now, uh, yeah, 
that I think is what they're going for here. I really do. But uh, I can't prove it yet, and I suppose we won't know until the movie comes out, but I'm guessing that's what they're going for. Um, certainly seems that way from everything we've seen so far. But I don't see grounds to complain over this. I mean, he's got the white hair. He's got the, you know, the green face. He's got the pointy ears. He's got the teeth. He's got the armor, which, honestly, I am glad they went with armor over cloth. I really am. Because, to be perfectly blunt, in an age where, you know, we have snipers, where we have um, automatic turrets, where we have, you know, you definitely need armor of some sort. And I'm glad that they, they still made it green. They made it green and kind of black. There's green and black in there. Not purple, sadly, but, you know, people would probably complain if it was purple. Oh, he looks too flashy. Stuff like that. So, I don't know. It's not perfect, like I said, but it's something I'm happy with. I'm thrilled we got that white hair. That's a detail that I never thought I'd see. I had hoped I'd see it, but I never honestly thought I would, but I did. I mean, it's it's not the hat, sure, but I'll take it, definitely. Definitely. I mean, that that's some fan service right there to me. But I really don't understand why this is so horrible. I understand why it's not perfect, and I understand why it's not ideal, and I agree. But nothing you see in a movie will be ideal. Nothing. You, to this day, have people argue about which version of Iron Man's armor. Not, not even the... Not even the, 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 you know, specialty suits in Iron Man 3, okay? The, the main armor that he wears in the movies. There are people to this day who say, oh, I think the Iron Man 1 armor was the best. No, I think the Iron Man armor in Avengers was best. I like the armor in Iron Man 2. People will fight over that, literally. They will fight over that. Because to them, one of them's their ideal, to the others, it's not. It doesn't necessarily mean it's horrible either, but they don't. You know, they have an ideal, and for some people, he's never worn his ideal armor because they like the armor like he wore in New Avengers, where it was very bulky, and the, the shoulders had almost like these spikes coming off them. Uh, in the back, some, you know, some people don't like that. Other people would like to say, you know, that they miss his classic suit, the one that actually looked almost like a skin suit, it's stuff like that. So in the end, no, it's it's not going to be your ideal, and it'll never be everyone's ideal. Even even the Spider-Man suit, that they have now. I think perfect. I think frankly, that's my ideal suit. It really is. I'm that is perfect. I love the crap out of that, and I know a lot of people who agree with me, and I know some people who, for whatever reason, disagree because they liked the one from the first one and thought they should have kept that. There are other people who think that the eyes are too big. There are other people who are upset that they didn't include the web under the armpits. Though, frankly, I don't really see the point of that, especially since it looks like it would actually be restrictive and keep him from raising his arms fully. But, you know, whatever. So, and some artists drew it and some didn't. So it, it doesn't really matter. To me, you know, I mean, this is my ideal. It, it may not be perfect to them, but it's perfect to me. Uh, this isn't perfect to me, but it may be perfect to somebody else. And, of course, you know, what have you. Uh, people, by the very fact that they have free will and have a different opinion, will have preference. But um, that also doesn't mean that I'm not going to defend my preference. And that also doesn't mean that they're not going to defend theirs. And that also doesn't mean that, you know, what have you. But to be perfectly blunt, to sit there and say that this looks horrible and somehow no different than what Harry wore in Spider-Man 3 or somehow worse than that Power Rangers suit the full war. I'm sorry, that's an insult to Power Rangers suits. None of them have looked that bad. <laughs> I mean, maybe in some of the really old episodes, series, that, you know. But, yeah, I mean, that harkens back to the days of, like, the characters whose mouths wouldn't even move. 
and yet, oh god, anyway, uh, but that's all I have to say, um, I think it's looking great so far, I'm extremely hyped up for the trailer, um, what I saw, I think you guys are definitely gonna love, um, and I think it's definitely gonna answer some questions and open up a whole bunch of new ones, alright, so, um, that's it for tonight, and I will catch you guys, uh, later, I guess, so, see ya.